Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah and this is episode 3 of the iOS and Android game making tutorial series. Quick recap, our goal with this series is to create a game called Tiny Planets, where you basically need to drag planets with your finger to stop them from colliding with each other. In episode 1 we set up the project, in episode 2 we programmed the core gameplay, and today we'll put into place a simple increasing difficulty system, make a main menu and create a loose panel from which the player can restart the game. As usual, Liam will take over from here, and I'll just continue playing games on my Nintendo Switch and watching Breaking Bad. Um, I mean, work on the dreadful whispers. Hey, Liam here. Let's start off by ramping up the difficulty of our game gradually over time. To do so, I'll jump inside of my random patrol script. We don't want the difficulty of the game to increase forever, so I'll create a public float variable called seconds to max difficulty. So if I type in a value of 60, for example, this will mean that the game will reach its max difficulty once 60 seconds of gameplay have passed. We now need some way to calculate a percentage of the current difficulty we should be at. So if we are at the beginning of the game, the percentage should be equal to zero because we are at the easiest difficulty. If we are at half of the seconds to max difficulty, the percentage should be equal to 0.5. And of course, if we are at the seconds to max difficulty variable, the percentage should be one. Let's create a function that returns a float that will let us calculate this percentage. I'll call it get difficulty percent. To get this percentage, we simply need to return time.time since level loaded divided by our seconds to max difficulty variable. Let's also wrap this division inside of mathf.clamp01 just to ensure that the percentage will be in a range between 0 and 1. Now, instead of just having only one fixed variable for speed, let's create two variables. One for the minimum speed, which will basically be the speed of the planet at the very start of our game, and the second one will be our maximum speed, which will be the speed of the planets once the seconds to max difficulty have passed. Of course, we'll keep our speed variable, but we'll make it private because we don't need to fill this variable in with a value in the inspector. We're going to use this variable to calculate what should be the current speed based on our current difficulty percent. To do so, I'll go right above the vector2.move towards line. I'll now set the speed variable equal to mathf.lerp between our min speed and our max speed based on our get difficulty percent function. Let me explain this line of code. mathf.lerp takes in as the first parameter the minimum value, so in our case it's our minimum speed. The second parameter is the maximum value, so in our case again it's our max speed variable. And finally, the third parameter that's ill taken is a percentage between 0 and 1. If that percentage is equal to 0, the mathf.lerp function will return the minimum value. If it's equal to 1, it will return the maximum value. And if it's equal to 0 0.5, for example, it will return the number in between the minimum and maximum values. Alright, so we now have a speed variable that gets updated as our difficulty percentage increases. Perfect. And there we go, that's all we need to do to make our game ramp up in difficulty. Let's now make a cool main menu for our game. So I created a simple main menu scene. I simply have some images for text, so a title image and a play image. I've also populated my scene with various planets, sprites and clouds just to make things less boring. Finally, I just made the background a nice light blue, adding of course Noah's speciality, his soft shapes for 2D lighting. Those soft shapes really add some nice colours to our background, giving it this nice Bora Bora vibe to our scene. There's one really important thing that we have to do, and that is to select my canvas and to set the UI scale modes from constant pixel size to scale with screen size. This will make sure that our UI fits perfectly on all different screen sizes it will scale up and shrink down depending on the resolution of the player's screen. Let's also set the reference resolution to 1600 by 900 because we are making this game for a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Okay, cool mates, now let's make the play button functional. To do so, I'll select the play image and I'll add a button component to it. What's really cool with Unity is that the UI works by default on touch devices, we don't have to add anything extra to make it work. Let's now create a new c -sharp script, and I'll call it Game Master. Once it has been created, I'll drag and drop it onto my canvas game object. 
Now let's double click on it to open it up. In the script, we're going to create a public function called go to game scene. I'll also import the Unity engine.scene management's namespace so that we can have access to Unity's functions that let us hop between scenes. Alright, once that is done, I'm simply going to write this line in my function. So scene manager .load scene, and then we need to pass in the name of our scene that we want to go to. And in my case, it's called game. And voila, that's all we need to do in the script at the moment. Let's make sure this function is public so that we can call it from within our button component. Now back in Unity, I'll press on the plus sign in our onClick event. I'll drag and drop my canvas game object in the slot and I'll find my game master script. Once that is done, I will select the go to game scene function. Now, whenever we press on this button, it will run the go to game scene function and that function will bring us to the game scene. Perfect. Before we can go and test this out, we need to add our scenes to the build settings. So let's go under file build settings. Once that is open, simply drag and drop the game scene and the main menu scene. Alrighty, if we now press play and open up our Unity Remote 5 application, we can indeed press on our play button and it will bring us to our game scene. Let's now quickly add a restart panel whenever the player loses the game, aka when two points collide with each other. So let's create that panel now. I'm simply going to start off by creating a UI panel game object. Like for the last one, we will set the UI skill modes to scale with screen size. And we'll set the reference resolution to 1600 by 900. Now let's create a UI panel game object. I'll make sure that it's covering the entire surface of the canvas just by scaling it up a little. Let's now change the color to black and make it a little bit transparent. Now we'll create inside of that panel a UI image game object. I'll drag and drop my restart text and I'll scale it up until it looks good. Like for the play text, I'll add a button component to the restart text. Now I'll duplicate this image, I'll move it down a little and I'll replace these sprites with our main menu sprites. Okay, let's now drag and drop our game master text onto the canvas game object. Let's open up that script again and create a few more functions for our UI. The first one will be called restarts. In here, we will simply use this line of codes to load the current scene we are in. Then, I'll create another function called go to main menu, and this one will simply load the scene with the name main menu. Okay, let's now save this handy dandy little script and go back to the Unity game engine. I'll select the restart button and press on the little plus sign. Once that is done, I'll drag and drop the canvas game object and I'll find the game master script. Then, I'll choose the restart function. Let's do the exact same with the main menu button, but of course, instead of choosing the restart function, we will choose the go to main menu function. Alright, that is now all set up. The last thing that we need to do is to only enable the restart panel when the player loses the game. So by default, I'll disable the panel game objects. Let's now go inside of our random patrol scripts. I'm going to create a public game object variable called restart panel. Then, I'll find the line of code where we are simply restarting our scene when two plans collide, and I'll replace it by saying restart panel active true. This will enable our restart panel. And there we have it, we can now test all this out. And indeed, when two plans collide, our restart panel gets enabled, and we can then press on either the restart button to reload the current scene, or on the main menu button to go back to the main menu. Okay, I'll now pass the mic back to my bro. Hey everyone, it's Noah. We hope you enjoyed this third episode and learned a thing or two. In the fourth and final tutorial of this series, you'll program a simple scoring system, as well as add some particle effects and sounds to the game. And we'll also look at cool ways you can expand on this project and different solutions to increasing the game's difficulty. If you're stuck, have a problem, don't understand some code, don't hesitate asking for help in the comments or joining the Blankthorn Prod Discord server. Me, Liam or some other cool member from the community will try helping you out of course. Okay, big thank you to Blankthorn Prod's awesome patrons for supporting this channel financially every month. Stay tuned everyone, cheers! cheers.